Bob, the Indianapolis Clowns. Yeah. Lids is based in Indianapolis, so it's sort of a perfect opportunity to talk about the Clowns. This is the team of a very young Henry Aaron. It's the team of Tony Stone. So yes, they had a couple of guys who would oftentimes dress in clown attire, entertain before, during, and after games. Yeah. Today, we would call them mascots. Right. Yeah, that's really where the notion comes from. But the rest of the guys were very serious baseball players. Honestly, had you asked them to dress up in a clown outfit, you'd have to fight them. They wouldn't have done it, <laughs> including the most famous clown of them all and my favorite baseball player of all time and my childhood idol, the late, great Henry Aaron, began his illustrious career with the Indianapolis Clowns, 1952. And my, perhaps my favorite picture inside this museum, amongst many, is a picture of him standing at the train station in Mobile, Alabama, 1952, about to leave home, likely for the first time, to go join the Indianapolis Clowns. At that time, he was a skinny, cross-handed hitting infielder. He couldn't have weighed more than 150, 160 pounds soaking wet at that time. He's so frail, he does look a little fearful because as he would say, I didn't know if I was leaving home to go play with kids my own age or grown men. Well, as we both know, he was going to play with grown men. Yeah. He acquitted himself quite well though. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 you so. know, even, even at that age and uh, did more than hold his own. I mean, he's gonna be in everybody's top five greatest major leaguers of all time. We know what he did at the major league level but we didn't know that he had played in the Negro Leagues. Yeah. And so now all of a sudden, he gives credence to the other guys that we've been talking about. Because I don't think it's far-fetched that there might have been some players before Henry Aaron that were just as good, it's scary to think, maybe better than a Henry Aaron. Tony Stone was the first female of professional baseball. She along with Mamie Peanut Johnson and Connie Morgan, were pioneers, women who competed with and against the men in the 1950s. Tony Stone would actually take the roster place of Henry Aaron. Yeah, right after the Braves signed Henry Aaron away from the Clowns, the very next year, they hired Tony Stone. Uh -huh. And then Mamie Peanut Johnson would follow her. Mamie Peanut Johnson was a five foot three inch pitcher with a strong right arm. <laughs> and she was striking those fellas out and young girls walk into the museum. They've been told they can only play softball. And then and you'll hear people say, well, maybe one day a woman will play professional baseball with the men. No, no, it won't be one day, it's already happened. Yeah, well, it's already happened. And, and you can see the look on their faces because this museum also is about challenging our young people to dare to dream of the possibilities. Representation matters. Yeah, it does matter. But here we show you that it has happened. So I have no doubt that it will happen again. Yeah. yeah, we've already done it and people didn't really know it. And I know it's hard to even fathom, <laughs> but there might have been some players who were every bit as good, maybe even better, that we don't know about. And that's what this museum is all about, to introduce you to those stars, to introduce you to what these leagues represented both on and off the field. That is why a journey to the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum, I think, is something that every family should experience.